Wasteland Weaponistics Episode 10. This episode is about the Type 93 Chinese Assault Rifle. The Type 93 was first introduced with Fallout 3 and sort of appears in Fallout 76. With it being an easter egg in Fallout New Vegas and only appearing in the files of Fallout 4 as an incomplete model. We will get to what I mean with it only sort of appearing in Fallout 76, but first we must go over its characteristics from Fallout 3. The Type 93 Chinese Assault Rifle is the standard assault rifle of the Chinese Liberation Army used during the resource wars that spanned from 2052 to 2077. It was also issued to Chinese affiliated units working within the United States. The rifle is chambered for the 5.56 NATO round and feeds from 24 round box magazines, which is odd as the curve of the magazine looks to be for the 7.62x39 round. This could possibly explain why the rifle holds a very strange 24 rounds and not the more common 20 or 30 rounds. This rifle can be found all over the capital wasteland and is used by just about everybody, from town sheriffs to mercenaries, super mutants, and even the technologically advanced Brotherhood of Steel soldiers can be seen armed with one of these every now and then. It's obvious that thousands of these rifles were smuggled into the U.S. by undercover Chinese forces at some point before the war. Much like how in real life Norinko, a Chinese state-owned weapons manufacturer, was able to smuggle over 2,000 full-auto AKs into the U.S. in the 1990s, and even tried to sell service-to-air missiles and main battle tanks to gang members. In fall, it also seems that some Type 93s were produced in the U.S. post the Great War, most likely in the Mama Dolce factories that were just fronts for the communist government. These factories, now operated by ghoul soldiers, serve eternally for their ideology, still obeying the orders they received 200 some years ago. Interesting enough, we did not find any Type 93s on the Yangtze, a Chinese nuclear submarine submerged in the Boston Harbor. One could say this is just a design oversight since the rifle was not in the game. I'm going to take it at face lore value and say that the Type 93 was not issued to submarine crews, as it might have been too large of a weapon for the tight quarters of a submarine. Now the fact that we know that it is called the Type 93 is especially rare, as this is one of the few rifles that Bethesda has put the nomenclature on the side of the receiver, as the marking T-93 can be seen. With this being further confirmed in Fallout 76, as there was supposed to be a shipment sent to the Fujinya intelligence base, which was an undercover Chinese communist base operating underneath the Mama Dolce's factory in Morgantown, West Virginia. But this request for rifles was denied. This is the reason why we don't find the rifle in West Virginia, but we do find them in D.C. They were unable to smuggle them to their West Virginia operatives and most likely ship them all to the D.C. area, which is why they are so prevalent in that area. <sighs> this brings us to what I said at the start of the video, with it sort of still being in Fallout 76. Bethesda does these kind of themed Atomic Shop releases, where they add an assortment of items that are all based around one theme. Sometimes they're holiday themed, other times they are faction themed. Well, Bethesda released a theme called Red Shift. The theme is about China and included communist themed gear like outfits, flags, a converted protectron, and even communist power armor, which is a lore discussion for some other channel. We're interested in a skin for the handmade rifle. This skin is more than just a paint job, as it converts several parts of the handmade into Type 93 Chinese assault rifle parts. Everything but the receiver and the magazine is replaced, and then nearly all of the rifle is painted with a Soviet-style olive green. There is also a Chinese red star applied to the sides of the dust cover and a Chinese writing on the right side. I do not speak Chinese, so if you know what it says, feel free to translate it in the comment section. Now, whether or not the Atomic Shop is canon is up for debate, as Bethesda has never said if the Atomic Shop from Fallout 76 nor the Creation Club from Fallout 4 and Skyrim is canon or not. For this video, I'm going by Timverse rules. Timverse rules go by on screen means canon unless said otherwise. If we presume that this gun is canon, then what is it? I don't believe it's meant to be the Type 93. This is for two reasons. One reason is that in the files of Fallout 76 is the model of the Chinese assault rifle and sounds relating to it. This might just be leftover Fallout 4 files as we also find the Pridwin in there as well. But the other being, weapons that have their model replaced usually get a new name associated with it. Like the dragon becomes the Nighthawk, compared to just a common color skin, like for the lever action, where its name stays the same. These Chinese handmaids are most likely an improvised version of the Type 90. Because the Chinese forces operating in West Virginia were not able to acquire real Type 93s, they created their own by converting handmade rifles into these hybrid rifles. 
The new Chinese communist NPCs in Fallout 76 are not equipped with this Type 93 hybrid, or even the Chinese power armor, instead using US weapons and even T-60 power armor. Other NPCs in Fallout 76 have been shown wearing Atomic Shop items, so why Bethesda chose not to equip these NPCs with the new gear related to their faction is a mystery. Another interesting place the Type 93 appears, or at least part of the gun, is in the War Rider power armor skin. The weapon's front end can be seen melded into the design. If you're unfamiliar with this skin, it is one of the four Horsemen of the Apocalypse skins Bethesda has sold in the Atomic Shop. This covers the eastern portion of the US, but what about the western portion? We find no Type 93s in the western portion of the United States outside of one easter egg in New Vegas, and it's not even a complete rifle, only the barrel exists in Fallout New Vegas. Barely even worth mentioning. Well, as we find no Mama Dolce's on that side of the U.S., it would make sense that the Type 93 was never smuggled into the western portion of the, of the U.S., and the one barrel we find was likely brought by a trader or multiple traders to, to the Mojave Wasteland, as we know travel across the U.S. is rare, but possible, being done by both Harold and Kellogg. There is a small amount of Chinese activity in the western portion of the U.S. In Hoover Dam, we find two Chinese stealth suits. These stealth suits are used by Chinese Crimson Dragon units, who are rarely equipped with this Type 93 assault rifle, and instead use swords, pistols, and sniper rifles. Besides these suits, we also find the Red Victory grenade rifle in the Mojave, and a note attached, attached to it. <sighs> the note reads, We found a seized shipment of Chinese Red Victory model grenade launchers, and thought you might like to have one for yourself. They're quicker to reload than our Great Bear, but they don't quite pack the same punch. Still, it'd be nice to give those bastards a taste of their own medicine if it comes to that, right? This means that the Chinese were able to smuggle in some small arms. So why we don't see any Type 93s is up for debate. Now for how the weapon works. Well, most people would guess that the Type 93 is just an AK. Um, it's not. It's actually much more complex of a design. The gun shares more in common with the RPD light machine gun than the AK-47 assault rifle. The receiver is the biggest giveaway. It's much too wide to be an AK. Also, the gas tube is different from an AK as well. There are some AK parts on this weapon, like the magazine is in a similar style and the pistol grip is also similar. The safety is also about the same shape, but it's much smaller and doesn't act as a sort of dust cover like on a real AK. With the gun being more of an RPD, we can deduce that the operating system is flapper locked. I'm guessing most of you watching this are unfamiliar with flapper locking. The flapper locking system was sort of this short-lived concept in the mid-1900s that died out pretty much after World War II. So how this works is you have two flaps on the side of the bolt that lock and then when fired move inward and unlock allowing the bolt to move backwards. S some guns that use this design. The Walter G43, the DP28 late machine gun, the RPD, and the Swiss MG51. These are all 30s, 40s, and 50s guns. The only modern example of a gun using the flapper locking system is the Alexander Arms Ufbert semi-auto 338 Lapua rifle. The design of the Type 93 is a weird one, being a hybrid between an AK and an RPD. At the time of making this video, there is a single unique Type 93, the Zhu Long Assault Rifle. It features higher damage and an increased magazine size to 36 over the standard Chinese Assault Rifle's 24, but at the cost of lower durability. It is acquired from an unmarked quest from the NPC Prime, started in the Museum of Technology. Whether he had the rifle before he entered the museum is unknown. Where the rifle came from is also unknown. For real life inspiration, Again, with a Fallout weapon, we see multiple real-life firearms combined to form a single weapon. The designer of the Type 93 combined multiple Cold War Russian firearms to get this rifle. The front end is an RPD gas system flipped upside down. The handguard is in a similar style to an RPD, but larger. The receiver is also heavily based on the RPD, even still having the hump for the belt feeding mechanism. It was also given parts of several AKs. The magazine is from the AK, the pistol grip is in the style of the old Bakelite grips, and the wired stock is a modified AS valve stock. This was also the first episode I wrote using an actual writing program. For all the past ones, I literally wrote them all in notepad. This one was written using a program called NimbleWriter I found on Steam. Yes, a writing program on Steam. 
Hopefully this brings a bit more quality to the writing of the series. So feel free to subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel, Trooper Fofo. See you next time.